Hi everyone, welcome to episode 23. So I'd like to get the audio system finished off today. So at the moment, the only way we can really play a sound effect is using this play sound method, which requires us to pass in an audio clip. Now, I'd like to provide an alternative way, which is with another method, still called play sound, but this one takes in a string for the name of the sound instead of an actual reference to the clip. You can also have vector three position, and uh, what this method will do is it will use the sound name to find the correct clip from a sort of sound effect library we're going to create. Okay, so let's go back into Unity, create a new c -sharp script called something along the lines of sound library. And can apply that to the audio manager. Open up the sound library script. So this will, this will have a public method which should return an audio clip. And we can call this something to the effect of get clip from name. Takes in string name as a parameter. And uh, okay, for the moment, let's just say this returns null. So one thing to keep in consideration is that we might have multiple versions of the same sound effect. For example, I've got uh, three different impact sound effects here that should pretty much play randomly uh, when a bullet hits something. So the behavior we want when the name matches multiple sound effects is to return a random one from that group. So let's, uh, let's create a little class for actually storing the sound groups. So we can call this, I guess, sound group is appropriate. And we'll have a public string for the name of the group. I'll call that the group ID. And we can also have a public array of audio clips for all of the sound effects in that group. Okay, we'll want this to show up in the inspector so we can say system.serializable. And let's make a public array of sound groups. Okay, so if I wanted to start assigning things in the inspector here, I could do that. Um, so say I make one sound group, I can call that group my impact sound effects, and I could add impact one, impact two, and impact three to that. So we want to uh, have a dictionary of all of the sound effects and all of their IDs so that we can easily find the clip that we're looking for uh, when this method is called. So let's say using systems.collections.generics that we can use the dictionary type. We say dictionary. So our keys are strings for the ID and the uh, type that we're trying to get back is a audio clip array. Okay, we can just call this our group dictionary. So in the, well, what's going on? In the awake method, we can just loop through all of our sound groups. So uh, let's say for each sound group, uh, group, I guess, in sound groups, we want to add to our group dictionary. So we'll say group dictionary dot add. It first wants the key, so that will be group dot group ID, and then it wants the value, which will be group dot group. Okay, that looks awfully weird. Maybe I should name this something else. Um, I'll just call it sound group. Okay. So that's all assigned to our dictionary now. So what we can do is in the get clip from name method, we can say if the group dictionary contains the key that's been given to us, the name, then we will return um, a random sound from that from that audio clip array. So uh, let's say audio clip array uh, sounds 
is equal to group dictionary with a key of name. And we'll return a random one of those, so sounds with an index of random.range from zero to the length of that uh, sounds array. Okay, that should work. And if we can't find a key, uh, if we can't find a, a value, I mean, in the dictionary with that key, then we can just return null. Okay, um, still need to set things up in our audio manager. So we can um, we can basically call the other play sound method, but using the value that we get from our sound library. Go to have to get a, a reference to our library first, though. So let's say a library. And in the await method, we can say that that library is equal to get component sound library. All right. So over here, we can call the play sound method, passing in library dot get clip from name, sound name, as well as the position. Okay, so I'm just going to create a second sound group. Uh, I'm going to call this maybe enemy death. So I've got two different sounds for the enemy death effect. Just apply those. Um, while we're here, maybe just add a third sound group, the enemy attack sound. I've only got one for that, unfortunately, but I have to make do. Um, okay, so let's open up the enemy script so that we can actually um, trigger those sound effects. So in this little take hit method over here, we can say audio manager dot instance dot play sound and using our new uh, uh, new version of the sound method we can just pass in the name impact as well as transform.position and if damage greater than or equal to health so this is our die condition we can say enemy death and finally, let's find where we're calling the attack coroutine. Um, over here, we can just add play sound enemy attack. Okay, let's try that out. Okay, so you can hear a nice little enemy attack sound. Um, they killed me, unfortunately, so I couldn't, couldn't try out the impact sound. Okay, well, it's, it's awfully soft. Um, should probably get a better sound effect for that, but it's, it's working, which is what's important. Okay, so before I go ahead and add in the rest of the sounds, uh, there are a few quick things I want to do with the audio manager. So we want the audio manager object to persist across scene changes because, I mean, if, if we're going from sort of the menu to the game scene, we don't want the music to suddenly cut out. So we can just add in a line. Once we set the instance, just say, don't destroy on load this game object. Okay, but the problem now is that if we've got an audio manager in each scene and they're all surviving the scene changes, we're going to end up with a bunch of duplicates. So we can first see if the instance, uh, let's say the instance is not equal to null. In other words, this instance variable has already been set by another instance of the script. So we know that this instance is a duplicate and we can just destroy it destroy game object. Okay, otherwise we can do the rest of this stuff. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is just to create a little public void method um, to set the volume. So I can take in a float for the new volume percent. And uh, of course we're going to need to know which of the three volumes we're trying to modify, the master, the sound effect, or the music. So let's make a little public enum. We can call it something like audio channel, referring to master sound effect or music. 
Okay. So like the the set volume method can also take in an audio channel as a parameter. And then we can just do a little switch statement on that. So case audio channel is equal to master. Then we set the master volume percent equal to volume percent. Same story with the other two channels. If it's sound effects, we set the sound effects volume. And if it's music, we set the music volume. OK, um, we should definitely update the volume of our two music source objects whenever the volume changes. So let's say music sources 0.volume is equal to music volume percent multiplied by master. And copy that for music sources 1. Uh, then finally, we want to actually save the uh, the volumes to the player preferences so that next time the game loads, we can remember what they were set to. So let's say player prefs dot set float master volume, pass in the master volume percent and do the same thing for the other two sound effects volume and music volume. I'd also like to load these now when we do our wake method. So we can say master volume percent is equal to player prefs dot get float. And same thing for the others. So we can uh, leave these here. That just means that if it tries to get a float and one doesn't exist, because we haven't set a master volume yet, then it will just use the default value of master volume percent, which we've set up here. OK, so let's save and I'm going to add in the rest of my sounds. So I don't think there are very many left. It's just level complete and player death. So let me just add those two in. Player death and level complete. So level completion is handled by the spawner class. So let's open that up. Um, I want to do that in the next wave method. So we probably don't want to play the level complete sound for the very first wave. So we can say just if current wave number is greater than zero, then we say audio manager instance dot play sound level complete. Okay, and then for the player death, um, so the player death is being handled in the living entity script actually. So I'm going to make this a public virtual method so that we can override it in the player by saying public override die. So before we call base.die, we'll just say um, audio manager dot instance dot play sound player death at the player's position. Okay, so at the moment, all of the sounds that we're playing are 3D sounds. So we're sort of playing them at a specific point in the game world. Uh, but some sounds, such as, for example, our level completion sound, actually would be better off as a 2D sound. So we currently don't have the uh, sort of a method for this in our audio manager. So let's create one. Um, we can make a public void play sound 2D. Take in a string sound name. So we can't use the audio source dot play clip at point method because that's obviously for 
playing clips at a specific 3D point. So we need a new audio source to use. So let's create an audio source variable. Um, we can call it our sound effect source, or more specifically, our sound effect 2D source. So we can just follow the same steps as over here, really. Uh, first, create a new game object, call that something like new sound effect 2D source. You can give it a name to be nice and organized 2D sound effect source. Let's just copy its name. So we want to assign that audio source to the sound effect 2D source. Okay, so then when we play a 2D sound, we'll say sound effect 2D source dot play one shot. We'll get the clip from the library. And we can give it a volume scale of sound effect volume multiplied by master volume. Okay, so I'm going to change the uh, the sound in the spawner to a 2D sound. So I'll just remove that vector 3.0. And let's give that a try. I've got an error here. Uh, that should be the sound effect 2D source, not the new sound effect 2D source. Okay. So when we go into the next uh, next level, we should get a little fanfare. Yay, very nice. Okay, we do let them kill me, so we can hear that play of death. Nice little whoosh sound effect. All right, so that's everything for this episode. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, see you in the next one where we will be doing some menu stuff. So until then, cheers.